Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Filmmaking Sucks podcast. Where we can tell... <laughs> I'm going to do the welcome to Filmmaking Sucks. Welcome to the Filmmaking Sucks podcast. Where we tell you all the mistakes you can make while making your film and how to avoid them yourself. I'm your host, one of your hosts, Lindsay. And I'm Annie, and we reversed it. We did. I was not getting that done today. No, no, no. <laughs> Three tries and nothing. So. Sorry, folks. Okay, so this is, it is officially fall. I am drinking a pumpkin iced coffee as we speak. Again. And uh, we have to apologize right off the, stop it. <laughs> We have to apologize right off the bat if you can hear our air conditioners. It is the beginning of fall, and New York has decided that... It's going to be 90 degrees out. We need a heat wave. Heat wave. Yes. So it is 92, 93 degrees yes. outside right now. So totally unexpected, considering the fact that it's been 60 degrees for like three weeks. Mm -hmm. Now it's 90. Yeah. So we have our air conditioners on because it's hot. H-O-T. Hot. So, hot, hot. Uh, if you can hear them, we're sorry. But sorry. <sighs> Just pretend it's soothing white noise. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this is also uh, the beginning of our Halloween season. Yes. The season of Halloween. The season of Halloween. Yes. Halloween time. Yeah. Uh, so Halloween um, every day. Halloween 365. Hashtag Halloween 365. I usually do 365 days of Halloween. That's well, my that's my hashtag. I, I like short it. hashtags. Whatever. I'm just that's no, my... I don't. I like ridiculously long hashtags. Yeah. Why don't you call me out on that? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I use 365 days of Halloween for my 365 just... days of horror movies. Yeah, I do 365 of horror. Yeah. So, uh, it is about to be October. So, it's almost horror season. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Um, we are usually very busy mm -hmm. in October, so um, we are going to do everything we can to record yeah. an episode, but my initial, my first, I said, let's just take a break in October. And I said, no way. Mm. We could right. do something. I said, fine. Fine. So I came up with an idea, a little different, a little different than your typical filmmaking sucks, where mm -hmm. we tell you about how we do things. We thought we would celebrate the season by telling you how the masters do things. Sure. Sounds good. Yeah. So we're going to choose some of our favorite horror movies and give you a look behind the scenes and um, some of the really cool movie magic tricks and tips. Or we're going to try to. We're going to try. We're going to try. We're going to try. Yes. Next weekend. Yes. We are in Massachusetts. Yes, we are. And Comic Con. Mm -hmm. So, um, so announcement, uh, announcement, uh, old announcement. Saying it again. Yeah. We will be October fifth, right? Fifth, it's sixth, October and seventh. Fifth is Theta States. Yes. In Southbridge, at 4 Massachusetts. PM. Yes. Four p.m. Southbridge, Massachusetts, at the Starlight Lounge, the Shauna Shea Film Festival. Uh, SeanaSheaFF.com You can get your tickets there You can go to MassGravePictures.com And the red bar at the top Will take you directly To buying the tickets It is the New England premiere Of our film Theta States We will be there We are opening the festival with it That's right We are a festival opener And remember If you are going to be able To make it Then send us a tweet Send us something on Facebook An email Let us know And we will bring you A bag of swag Yes So Um yeah. Only if you let us know, though. We're not going to be like wandering around. I'm not going to have bag of swags stuff? in my purse, okay? Who wants stuff? <laughs> I have enough stuff in there. Yeah. I don't know what I have in there, so but we'll, I have stuff in there. So we'll be there October 5th. We'll be there the 6th and 7th as well. Yep. Because the closing party award ceremony is Saturday night. Yep. So we'll be there for that. Since we're opening the festival, and then we wait for the awards yeah. for the end of the festival. So we'll be there for... Three days. Yeah, hopefully the hopefully the leaves will change a little bit mm -hmm. before you know now and then. Then we drive back in the Saturday ninety degree night. heat. <laughs> yeah. Then we drive back Saturday night and Sunday morning we head off to Comic Con. Mm -hmm. So we'll be at Comic Con as well. Woohoo! On the last day of Comic Con, that Sunday we'll be there. Yeah. If anybody else is going there? Let us know. Maybe we'll meet up. Say hello. Maybe I'll bring you a bag of swag. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's a lot to carry for New York Comic Con. But. uh Part of our uh, we, something we were talking about earlier is that I kind of miss talking about 
horror movies. Yeah, uh, you people who don't know may not know. Um, this is not our first foray into podcasting. Not at all. Um, this is actually, I mean, I guess I was a guest on the other one. Um, our third? Third? Technically, yeah. Technically, uh, I, third. Yeah, I've been podcasting for all, over four years now at this point. Look at you. I such know. a professional. I know, right? Um, yeah, so we started, you started off with a friend of ours. Um, Guest hosting. Well, I just said a friend of ours, like you guys don't know who Mario is. Yes. Because, oops, yeah. he hasn't been around in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Mario, Mario and you had a podcast earlier mm-hmm. that was called Mario Likes Movies. Yep. And uh, you guys talked movies. Mm-hmm. You would watch a movie and then you would discuss said movie. Well, that's how Mario Likes Movies started. Yes. That was him and his two other co-hosts mm-hmm. at first. And then, uh, long story short, things soured between the two of them. But he continued wanting to do the podcast. I had been a guest on it at one point, and mm-hmm. I really enjoyed doing it. So we revamped the podcast where we would talk about movies, and then we talked about genres of films, yes. where every episode we would choose a number of films instead of just yeah. one. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a really great one that you guys did with Louis and Brad. First episode. The slasher. No, the first one was uh, Halloween. It was yes, we the did, Halloween we did series. Halloween. Yeah. We did the no, we did just Halloween actually. Oh, did you? It was just Halloween. It was me, Mario, Louis, and Brad, and the four of us talked about Halloween for two hours. So that's a really great thing. I don't even know if you can find you it. You can't anymore. get them in. No, the website's down. So yeah. he he he, wah, wah. he closed that website. So you can't actually get those podcasts anymore. Uh, Maybe one day we'll resurrect yeah. them somehow. Then we some moved way. on to What Lurks on Channel X, which yep. was our paranormal and true crime podcast. Yeah, so we got some cool Halloween ones on that that yeah. you definitely check yeah. out. We do, I don't even know, zombies. Yeah, sometimes we talked about movies on that. And so we sometimes. Did, you know, uh, but I really miss talking about just movies. Right. So the idea for this came up. This special for today's series. episode too. And for this month yeah. I wanted to talk about horror movies and things yeah. like that. But this this episode specifically, you had the idea. Hmm. It was a collective idea. Who knows yeah, where it comes out of your brain, my brain. It's it, our brain. It it's was fine. a expansion on on the pre on the previous episode, uh, two episodes ago, where we talked about the seven story structures and I didn't mute my phone. <laughs> Fired. Um, yeah, so we talked about the seven basic plots. Um, I don't remember which episode it was. It was the, um, the apps thing. Oh, yeah, the apps. The gotcha. apps episode where we discussed the, um... Oh, uh, we were talking about screenwriting software, and one yeah. of the screenwriting software actually tracks the, the... The one of them. Yeah. The one, um... Screen, right? I know? can't remember the name I of it now, right go now. Go back and listen to the episode, guys. Yeah, Dramatica Pro. Yes, Dramatica, Dramatica Pro. Pro. Yeah, where it helps you through your story structure. And uh, we discussed that there are, right, seven? Seven. Seven basic story. Plots. Plots. Seven, ba- seven basic plots. Yeah, That's this, is actually, based, is, this is actually based on, hang on, I have the It's book on a book. Name. Yeah, it's a book that was written in 2004 called The Seven Basic Plots, Why We Tell Stories. And it's written by Christopher Booker. It's totally available on Amazon, so if you are really interested in this episode, you know, go and pick it up. I'm not getting paid to say that. I wish I was, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely go, you know, another great resource. I mean, if you're if you're screenwriting, it's a great time for screenwriting. You know, fall will someday, one day soon be in the air, and there'll be crisp leaves soon. and <laughs> sometime soon. Someday. So when you're curled up with your pumpkin spice coffee, you know, um, it's a great time to write a script. So... So we decided um, to talk about those things and equate them to horror films. Mm -hmm. Because it's actually really hard to find. Like, I searched the internet and I found nothing. And I actually uh, remember when I was taking a screenwriting class, Mm -hmm. our professor was outlining this for us. And I asked him to apply it to horror films. And he was really struggling. And this is is a gentleman that has been teaching screenwriting for, you know, Mm -hmm. 10, 15 years at this point. Um, so unless you're really, really familiar with the films and the genre itself, it's a little, mm-hmm. it, even we had a little bit of a hard time defining yeah. a lot of this stuff. Um, but we battled it out and we figured it out and we're going to hear. We also sat here for about a, we t- t- spent about a half hour, 45 minutes going through it. It it's was not a hard like a, half hour, 45 yes, minutes. Yes, but it wasn't a, um, <laughs> it wasn't like this scholarly no. thing that we've no. been researching. So no. I'm sure if we really put some more work into this to, you know, we could probably. Yeah. Maybe one day we'll write a book and then everybody can read it. Uh, But um, so we came up with 
basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to show that we want to explain how um, really the better horror films out there are the ones that combine mm -hmm. multiple story types yeah. into one. Yeah. That's generally what transcends and what makes the best deeper deeper characters yes. um you know a deeper story a story that resonates on multiple levels mm -hmm. i mean they all kind they come from having your characters go through their own plots yeah you know a great movie has not just one plot line but plot lines for all of their yes. characters so um the basic the first one mm -hmm. is um so what i'm going to do i think is okay. just we'll do a quick overview of what it typically means and the then seven we'll, the seven plots. i'll go you know point okay. by point we'll go by the seven of them but for each one we'll do the basic definition and then we'll do a hard definition okay yeah we'll do our best yes that's what we're yeah. gonna try and do yes folks. we're gonna try we make no problem we're gonna try <laughs> okay so the first one is overcoming the monster mm-hmm and the description of overcoming the monster is uh the protagonist sets out to defeat an antagonist force which is often evil now, Which threatens the protagonist and or their homeland. What is a protagonist? The protagonist is the main character. Your good guy. Your good guy. Essentially. Yeah. And your antagonist is? The bad guy, the villain. Okay. Or the force. The force, the bad thing. Yes. Okay. Just for those... And it could be a good girl. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry that I said good guy and yeah. bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> they could be the, good, the good thing and mm -hmm. the bad thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's the overcoming the monster yeah. is. It's you know typically what they use as examples: uh, David and Goliath, Beowulf, War of the Worlds, mm -hmm. um, Star Wars. If I can, one thing there is. Um, another reason I wanted, I really wanted to cover this before we really get into this, mm -hmm. is horror films are really looked down on by a lot of people. They are, especially other filmmakers. Yeah. A lot of filmmakers, when you tell them you make horror movies, you get one of two reactions. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> huh. Or, that's awesome. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You get total indifference. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, that's it. Conversation's over. I don't want to... They don't on, take on you a rare, seriously. On a rare occasion, I have experienced the third, mm -hmm. where pretty much the entire nose goes up and it does that, like, nose nostril flare of disgust, where it's... Oh, that's generally where I say why, why I said the conversation's over. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you know, so okay, so not so much indifference. Yeah, all right, then indifference and disgust. There's there's, there's indifference. So you get three, okay. Just, yeah. You get disgust. You get indifference, and you get. And then sometimes people throw horns. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yes. They either love you, they hate you, <laughs> or they don't care. But the problem no. is, two out of three times. You're going to get indifferent or disgust. You're going. You're going. To get, you're going to get a reaction where they're just like they don't want to talk to you anymore. No, one way they don't want to be your friend. They don't want to talk. If to you're you. at a networking yeah. event, they're going to slowly back away from you. Mm -hmm. And and, they and they're and they're going to have to you know fill their drink. So um, so I think this conversation is something I, I really wanted to do because something I've said for years to people is if you say you don't like horror films, it's because you haven't seen the right ones mm -hmm. and. Uh, that's really true. It really, I, that's my life. <laughs> there's a horror film for everyone. Yeah. There's some type of horror that everyone can enjoy. It will, it will literally like unlock. Cause I, I was not a horror fan. No. Um, I was raised to be anti horror. My, my parents, um, were very into empowering women. Um, and they, they told me from a very gentle age that horror films are pretty much just objectify women. Yeah. Um, so, they didn't allow me to watch it. It was like one of the worst things you could do in my yeah. house. <laughs> um, so meanwhile, when we met, yeah. you know, meanwhile, you, I've been watching your entire life. Yeah, I've been watching horror movies my entire life. Probably. Yeah, you were in the womb and you were like, <laughs> Ma, put on Rosemary's Baby. Um, but so, yes, yeah, so and then we, we actually met. And then you had said to me, like, do you like horror movies? And I was like, no. And you were like, well, you just haven't seen the right one yet. And I was like, mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. And then you put on Ginger Snaps, and my whole life changed. Yeah, you have. To, it's just all about the right one, because there's yeah. there's a horror film for everyone. Yeah, there is, and 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 I think that's and what really, I really and wanna... and in this day and age, like yeah, horror can fit, horror is very looked down upon. But let's see how many people are going crazy for it right now. 
See, and that's that was the next point I wanted to make. Mm -hmm. It, the witch, yeah. um, mother. These films are out and get out. Mm -hmm. There's another one. Yeah. Um, raw. Where they're raw. Yeah. Where they're people are finding that they're enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they say is, "Well, that's not really a horror movie." Because it can't possibly be a horror movie. Because I don't they like enjoy horror it. movies. Exactly. I don't like horror movies. I'm not a teenage boy. Yeah. So that's not a horror movie. No, it is a horror. I'm sorry, movie. that was really condescending. But that's <laughs> that's what most people think. Yeah. Yeah. Horror movies are for are for boys. They're for young. They're for kids teenage boys. They're for different because kids. you know they're half naked women and running through the woods, and that's what teenage boys like to say. Yeah. So the fact that you have horror films uh -huh. with strong female characters. Huh. Story heavy story structure, um, uh, 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 social um, commentary mm -hmm. in them. Yeah, it's just like, well, it can't be a horror film then. No. Night of the Living Dead. Oh, it's amazing, amazing. Night of the Living Dead didn't actually have, wasn't meant to have. No. Uh, social commentary, but it did because of the time. Yeah. That it came out in. Well, I mean, it was it was it was, it was almost it was like accidental. It were, I wouldn't say it was accidental. It I was. think it was just, you know, it was the fact that they didn't see a problem with casting a black man as their lead. No. Um, and they were like, this is the it most talented. It was talent. progressive. Yeah, it was progressive. And they had progressing thinking. And, and, and it was their progressive thinking that really, I think. Yes and no, though. Yeah, no. I mean, the times are absolutely, I mean, Martin Luther King, no. But George Romero also said, well, we cast him because he's the only actor we knew. Yeah. He was the only person who they knew who was a trained actor. So, yeah. of course, we're going to give him the lead. And that poor guy probably had terrible roles and was super excited to, you know, have it's a quite, lead. It's possible. You know? I, don't know what, I don't know what else I don't he know. did uh, off the top of my head. But, yeah, they had a, one, the one friend of theirs who was a real yeah. actor yeah. happened to be a black actor. Yeah. And they had they said, well, we have to give him the lead because yeah, he's, he's going to carry the movie. He's an actor. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, it was very progressive of them to not see a problem with it. Right. You know? And then when you get to the end and having him be killed, mm -hmm. that was that was a bit of commentary yeah. on the world that they lived in. Yeah. That this hero, that, yeah, they created a black hero and then had the white guy kill him. The fact that they didn't and change that, because uh, I think that was in the original script. And the fact that they didn't change it, they didn't, like, stop themselves like, eh, this is a black guy. Maybe we shouldn't do this. You know, like, I think that is... Well, I think what they were doing was they were really trying to show that this is the world. They, this really yeah. was the world they lived in. This was the 60s. Yeah. This was the world they lived in. Um, and then while they were, the movie was done, edited, and they were bringing it to a theater in New York. They had one print of it. Yeah. They were bringing it for their first run yeah. to play it at a theater in New York. And in the car on the way there, they heard about Martin Luther King Maybe being shot. shot. Yep. So... By the time it came out, it was the most socially relevant movie mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. So that's why I say it was accidental. Yeah. You know, uh, the it fact that they were progressive enough in their story that they let it. Fortuitous. It was fortuitous. Okay. Yes. There you go. It was fortuitous. That's yeah. that's a, that's a great way of explaining it. Um. But it wasn't intentional. No. It wasn't something like, well, hey, Martin Luther no, King just they got didn't, shot. They, so. they, did, they didn't turn the car around and, and go and edit <laughs> the one the ending. <laughs> Reshoot the ending and say, we got to do this. No. <laughs> no. Uh, and then when it came to Dawn of the Dead, he, did, he, he, was, he followed that yeah. trend and continued with the consumerism and the social. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but he did it with zombie movies. And, they did, and that, this is why people look down on it, because they didn't see past well, the gore and the blood of it. They just saw... That's I it. think, they I think, saw... you know, I think audiences back then, the younger mm -hmm. folk probably did. Um, it's very punk rock. Yeah, it's, it's very, very punk, punk rock. punk rock. Fuck the yeah. system. Yeah, it's a, there is always a progressive underground yes. community. Yeah. You know, and they'll get it, you know, but I think at this point, so many of our monsters have been WBIs'd. Is that a... New phrase? I don't know. WBI. Yeah, like the, the zombies are pretty now. CW'd. CW'd. <laughs> CW'd. That's the one I was looking for. WB when I was a child. I'm aging yeah. myself now. Um, but yeah, CW. You know, it's it's you know. Everyone has vampires to sparkle and zombies are pretty and you know, they've been so whitewashed and sugar coated. Our Not monsters. Whitewashed in the racism. No, way. no. Whitewashed as in what? 
I don't know, cl- cleanse. They've they've Clean. been they've they've okay. been cleaned up. Our monsters are now wearing suits and ties, and and they're no longer like falling apart and you know icky and gory anymore. They've taken the fun out of the monsters. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. So I feel like you know now it's harder to make as much as a statement. Um, you know, back then, I mean, he was the, he's the grandfather of the zombie genre, mm-hmm. you know, zombies were ghoul. I mean, he was technically trying to make ghouls, um, mm. flesh eaters, flesh eaters. Um, so zombies really started with him and he really redefined the zombie. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> I'm just letting you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really think that, you know, there, that was a really awesome time to introduce a new monster. Hmm. Um, and, and to give a new, uh, even like give an old, I mean, it's a ghoul. A ghoul became a zombie. Um, but I think it was a really great time for him to be able to apply these things to a monster that wasn't so well known. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at this point, you know, we've rebooted our monsters how many times and we're rebooting the monsters again. Yeah. Um, and we're not rebooting them for socialistic. Horror movies change with the time as yeah. the threat to our to the public mm-hmm. changes horror films change yeah our current when, when people are scared they want to be distracted by their fear and sometimes you want to be distracted by that fear with something that's even you face scarier it. You face it yeah. yeah you make it and, real. and by making you be, by putting a monster's face on your fear you're able to face it in a different way because it's no longer the fear that you were actually feeling mm. okay i used to study psychology it's not my fault <laughs> so let's get into the structures then. Yeah. First one is overcoming the monster. Right. Which is pretty much every horror movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've already kind of touched on half of yeah. it with yeah. that really weird tangent. Um, sorry. Overcoming the monster. Every single horror movie a zo- you ever know, made. A zombie can be racism. A zombie can be consumerism. A zombie can be... It's overcoming... Well, the allegory. Of yeah. I don't even want to get into the allegory yeah. so much. But I mean, that's how. That's one of the ways the storytellers have used mm-hmm. the monster and the plot line of overcoming a monster. Yeah. Is It's very popular. And I think it's like what really what we're doing now is very much putting a real life face onto the monster but let's go back in time then yeah clearly the overcoming the monster would be jaws and the thing and all the slashers you got anything else no jurassic park i mean it's literally every single horror movie is overcoming the monster yeah every single one of them and where they become different is when you start getting into the other right this is what makes it what makes a horror movie deeper Yes. Every horror movie, yeah, you you can put people killing zombies, and that's overcoming the monster. Mm-hmm. But if they don't have a reason why they're killing the zombies, and the zombies really are just like, I just want to eat your brain, and they're like, I just want to protect my brain, it's not it's a just very a horror movie. yeah, it's just a horror movie. It's not a very meaty story. Mm-hmm. So how you add meat to it is by adding these six other plots. Okay. I don't know why I paused there. It was weird. Okay, so the next one is rebirth. Okay. And the definition of rebirth? The standard definition, it's a story of renewal. Uh, During the course of the story, an important event forces the main character to change their ways, often making them a better person. So think It's a Wonderful Life, The Frog Prince, Mm -hmm. Beauty and the Beast, A Christmas Carol, is, and uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. So when it comes to a horror film now, um, you're gonna flip it, more or less. You're gonna flip it. No. Uh, 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 um, I see it. If you're gonna turn, if you're gonna, if you're gonna have re- rebirth in a horror film, mm-hmm. I think that generally your antagonist becomes the monster by the end, embraces yeah. Yeah. becoming the monster, making them stronger and better in their own eyes. Mm-hmm. You I mean, I, I think that's one, it's one, one element. It, it, it's a reversion. I mean, mm-hmm. if you really want to flip renewal, it's a reversion. Yeah. You're reverting back to a bad self could mm-hmm. also be another version of rebirth. Um, so, um, like Ginger Snaps. Ginger Snaps is a really great example of mm-hmm. this. You know, she's bitten by a werewolf, which is the circumstance that changes everything, and she slowly becomes the wolf, Yeah, the monster. 
Um, teeth is another really good example. Teeth, I think, is even better than ginger snaps. Yeah, teeth, ginger teeth is a little bit more down the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. She is actually becoming a stronger person. She yeah. is actually reborn as a positive. Mm -hmm. um, which, if you haven't seen Teeth, please just go and watch Teeth because it's yeah. an incredible, incredible movie. Um, I can't say enough how good it is. And I don't yeah. want to say anything more because it's going to ruin it. Trust me, just go and watch it. Mm -hmm. um, the Witch. The Witch is perfect yeah. example of of rebirth. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the horror version of the, it. Yes. Yeah. It, no, even so. No, even still. She even still so. becomes stronger. She becomes stronger in the end by by embracing the darkness. Yes. Um the thing that was opposing them in their life, that thing that they they, they in in the witch they they lead their their um what's the word? They're banished from the town. Yeah. Exiled. They're exiled from their from their town, and they're forced to go live out and in the wilderness, in the in the wild. Yeah, because this is this is not a developed America. No, this is this no, is, it's this is seventeen or eighteen hundreds. Yeah. Um. So they're they're banished from their town for heresy, and they're forced to live on their own. And the it's it's all about the obstacles of being isolated. And uh, trying not to survive. The, yeah, essentially trying to survive. Yes, yeah, survival. Yeah, survive on your own. And there's an evil force that's dividing the family. It's in the woods. Yeah, it's an evil force in the woods that's dividing the family. And uh, he kidnaps one of the the baby. Mm -hmm. He kidnaps the infant. And I do. Have, I, I'm going to say one more thing. There's a lot of spoilers in this episode. Yeah, I'm from sorry. Movies. There's a lot of spoilers in this episode. So, uh, yeah, you might want to skip a little bit. <laughs> If you haven't seen The Witch, I won't ruin teeth because oh, it's so yeah. good. But yeah, but the at witch. the end of The Witch, uh, yeah, the, the 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 witch she embraces the evil mm -hmm. to become stronger. She embraces it. Yeah, I mean, essentially, you know, her mother is unable to cope outside the system and begins to break down. Mm -hmm. um, so she's forced to step into the uh, the role of the mother, mm -hmm. the caregiver of the glue of the family, and, and the um, kids are. The kids don't listen Weird to her. Craziness. Yeah, the kids don't listen to her. Yeah. I mean, that's essentially they're not accepting of this. You're not my mother. I don't have to mm -hmm. listen to you. Um, at the same time, the kids are also drawn in by the family pet of Black Philip the goat. Black Philip. Um, so cute. I want one so bad. <laughs> um, yeah. So Black Philip, he is the family goat, and he amuses the children with his antics mm -hmm. and his dances. Yeah. Um, and avenges then. You know, eventually we find out that the darkness is inside of Black Phillip. Mm -hmm. um, and he's slowly been turning the family yeah. against one another. And um, he's dividing them. He's dividing yeah, them. He's dividing them. And finally, the main girl, the protagonist, um, has to face a choice whether to join him or to, you know, essentially die. Yeah. And, and she decides to she join. She decides to join him join and live evil. deliciously. Yes. Yes, he offers. It's kind of a Faustian tale. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a Faustian story. Um, only uh, there's no tragedy in it. Faust is, you know, he gets the deal and the deal becomes his undoing. He makes a deal with the devil and the, the, the deal undo, does, yeah. undoes his. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that's what, and, and that's, she's, she's reborn as something mm -hmm. greater and stronger and more powerful. Uh, do we have any other examples for this one? Um, uh, Nightbreed. Nightbreed was oh yes, Nightbreed was great for rebirth. Nightbreed is a combination of other of other oh, yeah. things too, uh, because, like I said, the the biggest what makes the greatest horror movies of have ever existed mm -hmm. so great is the fact that they are multiple. They take multiple pieces from all of these story structures yeah, so and combines them into a new one. Yeah, so let's introduce then. Um, the quest. Um, Nightbreed is is an example of, of a quest and is mm -hmm. also a journey in return, um, which is our next two. Well, it's not a return because he doesn't return. There's no well, return. Well, he returns from the dead. And, eh, it touches that is on the it. quest. It touches on it. It's a quest. Um, so a quest is defined... Um, a protagonist and some companions set out to acquire an important object or location, facing many obstacles and temptations along the way. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have to realize about Quest, Quest is literally a mission from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's yeah. just literally going they somewhere. They have to go somewhere. Right. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Yes. Is a quest. They're yeah. going somewhere, and the end of the film is when they arrive. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, of, Lord of the Rings yeah. is. The entire purpose is to go to this place. Yes. Go to this place or, or find this thing. Yes. Um, so Nightbreed is a quest as yeah. well as rebirth. Mm -hmm. he, he, he becomes reborn yeah. as a result of his quest. Yeah. He's trying to find Midian. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to go where the monsters are. Yeah. And he becomes their savior mm -hmm. as a result of finding Midian. Right. Okay? Uh, he's thrust into the situation. Nope, that's the next one. That's... What? That's the next one. That's Journey. Okay. okay. See, this is where I get all confused. Because <laughs> they sound so similar. They, so. they do sound very similar. Okay, a journey, on the other hand, a journey in return. That mm -hmm. is what the official title of this one is. Mm-hmm. This one is um, a protagonist go goes to or is forced into a strange land. And after overcoming the threats it possesses to them, they return with experience. Mm -hmm. So this is literally a transformation through travel and homecoming. Okay, so, so the Nightbreed travel and the too, homecoming then. are required. Yeah, Nightbreed does fit that too then. Yeah. You know? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, no, another example of the quest. Once again, the quest is literally from point A to point B. Yeah. There doesn't have to be a transformation. There is no. Yeah. It's just okay. literally traveling somewhere. All right. So uh, they, the they, Devil's they, Pass. Yes, the Devil's Pass. The whole purpose is them to go somewhere. They're trying to find what happened mm -hmm. to the uh, uh, to the Dyatlov um, Pass. What happened at Dyatlov Pass? Yeah. So they're literally following the other's previous quest. It's an excellent movie, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I love that movie <laughs> so, so good. much. I know. I you, took me, you took me like 100 times to like get through it and watch it. And I was and like, so you're like, like, we should watch this. And I was like, eh. Yeah. Eh, but it's so good. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Uh, another good one is Blair Witch. Blair Witch is exactly that. Yes. Yep. They go, they're going to find the witch. Yep. In they're a going into the woods place. to find the witch. That's it. Yep. That's the whole purpose. They of are it. following the story of the witch from mm -hmm. point A to point B to point C. Point, but the, yep. end, the end result is finding this witch. Mm -hmm. uh, the Wicker Man. Yeah. The Wicker Man is a journey. Yeah. Wicker Man's a journey. He is going to a location and he is trying to find said girl. Mm hmm. World War Z is a journey. Mm -hmm. They're trying to find the cure. Yep. That's it. That's the entire purpose. Mm -hmm. So that's how you make a journey yeah. film. That's These are the horror movie journeys. It's it's a location. It's a destination. Yes. Those are, that's, what, that's what defines the quest versus the journey. The journey, again, is the actual transformation through taking mm -hmm. the quest. Yeah. So it's one step further than the quest. Yeah. Um, so some examples of that would be... Um, the journey in return. The journey in return would be the abyss, or event horizon. Yep. Yes, where they go. The abyss. <laughs> oh, the abyss. Chills. The abyss. Oh, sphere is sphere another really is great one. Excellent one. Sphere is excellent. They're going to find this. They know that. I think. That, and you said in the journey, they're thrust into a situation yep. that forces them to go find something, mm -hmm. and they return often, changed. What, what, okay. what they use as an example for the journey. Um, Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. She is forced into the land of Oz. Yes. She takes this journey and she fights the Wicked Witch with her, you know, and, and then eventually is returned home thankful for mm -hmm. what she has. So she's thrust upon this strange land. There, She has to overcome something in that land that then creates growth. Okay, so then that, okay, so that is Nightbreed then. Mm -hmm. Yes, Nightbreed is journey in return. Because he's thrust into the situation because in Nightbreed, Decker mm -hmm. is actually the killer. Yeah. And Decker is on a quest to find Nightbreed. Mm -hmm. To find the Nightbreed. To yep. find Midian. Yes. So Decker, the killer, mm -hmm. is on the quest. Right. He believes it's his destiny to destroy the Nightbreed. Mm -hmm. Because there's been, um, in history... There's always been an adversary to the Nightbreed. Yeah. And he believes he is the new one. He is, that's his entire purpose in life. Right. Is to destroy what's remaining of the Nightbreed. And um, in order to destroy them, he's got to find them. You can't find them unless you are one of them. It's the only way you can get to Midian is if you are one of the monsters. Right. Uh, so, so he in his creates quest, Boon. Yeah. He in his creates, quest, one of the obstacles... One of his obstacles is and to find... And his temptation is he has to become a killer. Well, no, Decker is a killer. Yeah. Decker is a killer. His killing is... The purpose of his killing is to train himself to be able to destroy the Nightbreed. Mm. Okay. He, um... 
he puts the idea of it in Boone's head. That he that Boone think made makes Boone thinks that he's the killer. That right. Boone thinks he's a murderer. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, he's a monster. Yeah. So and then he plants the idea of Midian, where the monsters go, in Boone's head. Right. And as a result of that, Boone is then killed and he returns. So Boone as is a actually monster. thrust into the strange yes. world of ha of be being a monster and having to find Midian. Exactly. And then one step further, which is what we said, making this meteor, is um, he finds that he's actually not a monster and he is reborn mm -hmm. as a monster as from hero. an attack, as the hero. And he becomes the hero. Yeah, as the savior. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's the savior of the Nightbreed. He's the one who has to take them to the new land where they can where they can survive. Mm -hmm. It's They had a prophecy. The Nightbreed had, the, had a prophecy where uh, a new savior would be born right. from the bite of one of the nightbreed mm -hmm. and um Pelican bites him when he's trying to he's literally trying to eat him yeah and he just bites him and boone gets away from him so boone is then reborn as a result because now he has the bite of the yeah. nightbreed he's fulfilling this prophecy right so even though he's thrust upon the situation, mm -hmm. it was destined for him yeah. to be thrust upon the situation. Right. You know? And changed and, from it. Yes, and changed from it. So as a result, he becomes the hero, he becomes the savior, and he escape he he helps the nightbreed escape. Right. And what's the guy that uh he meets at the hospital that cuts his head? Oh, I can't think of his name right now. Um yeah. But he's also on a quest for Midian. Yes, he's on so, a quest for Midian as this well. This is another really great thing you can do to meet and up your story. Every one of your characters are going to have their own motivations. And mm -hmm. you can find a lot of these motivations in these plots. Yeah. If you plot out one of these plot lines for each one of your characters, mm -hmm. it really makes the world much and the story much more all-encompassing, I guess. Yes. And more interesting. It does. It does. Absolutely does. Um, like, Lylesburg is the leader of the Nightbreed when he gets there, mm. and Lylesburg dies. Lylesburg's story is, is a tragedy, because mm. he is their leader, and um, he has to die to save them. Right. To allow Boone to become and he And he had pride, and he didn't like him in the beginning, right? No, he thought he didn't want him He didn't, he didn't it, want Boone, and he actually... Pelican I'm remember, didn't want him either. I'm remembering also, I'm, I'm like, I, I haven't seen Nightbreed in a while ever since we overloaded on that song. Um, <laughs> but um, he forbade them from biting mm -hmm. to prevent this from happening, from yeah. preventing his downfall to the it savior. Would be the it would be the destruction of them. Many yeah. of them were, were going to die in the process, and he was just trying to save them. It's yeah. no, we have to stay below ground, we have to hide, we have to keep hiding and stay hidden. Mm -hmm. Never come out into the world, because even though this is, a pro this is a prophecy and it's going to save us and bring us somewhere, most of us are not going to survive. But it's also, I mean, it's a little bit of his pride, you know, where he's yeah, the well, leader and he doesn't want to, you know. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't want to, but, right, but. Which is what makes it tragedy. Yes, but when I'll we, yeah. when they baptize Boone, mm -hmm. he is all about it. Yeah. You know, Pelequin's another one. He was very against him being there. But then when they baptize him, they realize he's the savior and they're happy. To, it's it's really weird. Yeah. It's really weird how that happens. Well, when you watch Clive, the film. Clive Barker's a very, very well, it's, complicated writer, I yes think. Yes and no. It's not so much because it's it makes sense it's in also, the book. Yeah, it's, it's also the, the, editing. the, the editing. The movie was is, cut to hell. so badly edited. Yeah, the movie's cut to I mean, not badly hell. edited, but it's very choppy. Yeah, the movie was cut to hell. I mean, it goes from from Pelican trying to kill Boone to all of a sudden they're five best minutes buddies. later. He's yeah. yeah, he's he's smiling and, and clapping he, he's, for he's him, slapping for him his, on the back. Good rebirth. job, good job. Yes, you know <laughs> it's very badly edited yeah. in that, and that's and that's why Clive Barker hated it. Yeah, that's why he was really upset with the way the film turned out. So anyway, so the next one, yes, okay, the next one is Rags to Riches. This was the hardest one to really find. Right. So let me explain it first. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is when the protagonist acquires things uh, such as power, wealth, or a mate before losing it all and then having to gain it back by growing as a person. So Cinderella, Aladdin, Great Expectations, uh, Trading Places. I know you like that one. I love Trading Places. <laughs> I love Trading Places. 
It was. I mean, Trading Places is one of the one of the greatest comedies ever. It's. <laughs> it's. I love Trading Places. It's such a good movie. I know. I think you've watched it like three times in the last like month. I don't even know. It's one of those. Whenever it's on, I have to watch it. <laughs> I love that. You know, but it was kind of hard to find it. Although, although it's although, like you said, it's. It, they acquire something or a mate. Hmm. So that is, that uh, follows romance as well then. Because mm-hmm. the thing that they could be acquiring that makes them, that bring, that make, that, that, that they're considering to be riches could be the perfect mate. Oh, I thought of another one. What? Just you saying that. Huh. Love objects. Yes. This is why I was trying to, what I said earlier, I was like, what, yeah. why is there no romance category? Because romance is actually in here. Yeah. Romance could be a rags to riches hmm. um, or it could be a comedy, which I'll get to. Yeah. Um, but they have to acquire it and lose it, then lose it, and then gain it back again, and gain it back. Mm-hmm. Or they have to have it and then lose it. Love object. Yeah, if yeah, yeah if you're literally if you're literally switching it for horror, mm-hmm. which is what we, you know we said in the beginning, you have to kind of do. It's essentially somebody losing something. Yeah, it's you know something that they have physically mm-hmm. being and, a downfall. Uh, my my um, example of this earlier. We put down Starry Eyes. Yes, which is, is perfect. Is Rags to Riches and Rebirth. Mm-hmm. It's a Rags to Riches story yes. and a Rebirth. Yeah. Because in the end, she, stro- she finally gets what she wants. Well, she's also reborn, she's as reborn as... In the middle of it, yeah. Yes. Well, no, that's actually the end of the movie, is her being reborn. Oh, that's They're right. Shaving the head and, yeah. you know, and everything. She's, you yeah. know? But it is Rags to Riches. She's mm-hmm. trying to get fame. Mm-hmm. And... Um, it eventually becomes her downfall. Mm-hmm. Or it, it, yeah, I think in horror movies, once they get it... It's becoming the monster. Yeah, yeah. It's essentially pursuing something to the point that you become a monster. Chasing power. Chasing power or, or an object. Mm-hmm. And was, having that uh, object overcome we you. We had other ones, too. Uh, Black Swan. Black Swan, yep. Yeah. I, I argued Rosemary's Baby. <sighs> it's very thinly veiled, but yeah. it's very thin. Uh, guy's, guy's perspective, yeah. Like, again, if we're taking this on a character yes. level, Guy is absolutely a rags to riches. Yes. You know, um, you could also argue that she is a richest rags, where she was a happy-go-lucky, um, ready to start a family. She mother. was, She wanted to be a mother, and she wanted to be a wife, and she wanted to be a homemaker, you know, and then slowly she becomes none of those things. So his... But- Incline is mm-hmm. causing her decline. But she loses the baby. Mm-hmm. She gives birth, and then there, she's told that that she's told that she lost the baby. Yeah. And then reacquires it. Yeah. She does. She reacquires it. And it's also yeah. It's thin. F- it's thin. It's very. It's thin. But I mean, it's a, yeah. I mean, it's hard. I mean, we're not really good at really good nice transformations in horror. Yes. Like we're really not. You know, where it's like she loses the baby and then she realizes she the baby is alive, but it's the devil's baby, yeah. and she is going to be the devil's mom mm-hmm. now. Yeah. So yeah, she does. She is reborn as as somebody who is anti evil to the mother of evil. Yeah. The caregiver giver of evil. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I had this. I had this conversation with someone the other day, um, who is very. He's very much against the rules. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like rules. He doesn't like yeah. following the, structure. Who... Yeah, he's very artistic in the way yeah. he does things. But I explained to him. I said, "See the pro- see here's here's the thing." Um, especially when it comes to something like like let's say you're taking a, str- a screenwriting class. Mm-hmm. They give you all these rules. Yes. And he looks at it like, why do we have to have these rules? And to an extent, I agree with him. Why do we have to have these rules? But why would you take a screenwriting class in the first place? Because you want to know how to write. Mm -hmm. And it's just like everything else in life. You have to learn to do it correctly. Learn how to do it within the lines before you can properly break through those lines you have to understand yes if you don't understand the proper story structure you Mm -hmm. can't tell a story in the first place if you don't understand structure you're never going to tell a coherent story without it because most likely you're going to bend one of the lines that you shouldn't be bending yeah um and and you're going to lose the audience and and the it's not going to be like say you're building a house yeah you know there are load-bearing beams Mm -hmm. if you don't know which line is which yeah or which where to Beam place the load beaming, yeah. load, load bearing. Well, beams. I mean, even if you're doing a house renovation, hmm. you know, and there's a bunch of beams, if you don't know which one is the load bearing beam, you can the house you is going to collapse you, on you. Yeah, you could collapse the entire house. You're going to collapse your entire story. Yes. 
Yeah, certain things have to be there because it's just, that, that's just it's how it is. It's a form of communication. You we, know, you have to be you have to know the the language mm-hmm. before you can start to you know shorten it. Let me give you the exact example of what we were talking about. Okay. One one big thing is a big source of contention. A lot of the one hundred eighty degree rule. How many times I hear filmmakers complain that they hate the 180 degree rule? Trust me. Trust me. It's important. It's very important. So disorienting. I have seen films that totally disregard it at all times. And it is the most dizzying, disorienting thing to watch. And he says to me, well, I don't follow the rule. I don't follow the 180 degree rule. I say, yes, you do. You don't break it half as much as you think you do. Because, truth truth be told, me, I'm one of his cameramen, mm-hmm. and I know his, and the other one of his, yeah. we are there's two of us who are his main cameramen, yeah. and the two of us will not break that rule. No. So I said to him, I said, well, here's the thing, you may not like it, but your cameramen mm-hmm. never break it. We don't. We don't break it unless it's necessary, unless it's called for. Unless, so, unless physically you tell us to. Yes. You know, which is very rare where it's he, very rare. he adjusts yeah. and your I, location. Yeah, so I said to him, in your edit, you don't actually break it as much as you're thinking you are. You're getting close, yeah. but you're really not breaking it. You know, there, kind of, there are some times where he has. And I said, I said to him, I explained one specific scene. I said, you broke it when you saw this this character arrived when this character returned it was in his it was in his it was in his film one of the antagonists returned Mm -hmm. i said and you broke the rule right there he's like well he said well yeah i had to it was basically because the way we were shooting and the green screen and blah 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 i said yes but here's the thing i wasn't the cameraman there Mm -hmm. i said your camera guy he knows that rule and he follows it okay he knew he could break it right then and there because someone was was, entering into it was it was because we were seeing the villain return mm. and you had to give that perspective you know it was it was it was a view of the of the antagonist right. that we had to see skewed so it was good if the audience was a little off put if exactly. they were a little distracted exactly. if, if something felt off it was good because it was literally the villain yes. they're going to associate the villain with that feeling precisely precisely so Which it was again, the perfect time yeah, to break, break it. the rule exactly and that's what i said to him i said see here's the thing he's like yeah but i don't consciously follow it i said no you don't consciously follow it but you have an eye you have an eye for visuals. Hmm. You know what looks good and what doesn't look good. Yeah. And that's the thing. You don't break it because you realize when you do break it, it looks bad. Yeah. It's a subconscious the, the very, decision. The you're very making. rare times I've held a camera, way back in the days of when I was making films in school, you have that feeling that something isn't right. Mm-hmm. When you are shooting a dialogue scene and then you come back to that dialogue scene and you're just like, hmm. Mm-hmm. Something's not right here. Yeah. It's most often yeah. it's the 180 degree rule yes. because you're literally you were looking at the frame when you shot it. And it doesn't look right, and it just doesn't look right. Yeah. You don't know like what it is. You're not like saying it's the 180 degree rule, yeah. but you you know that something's not right. Exactly. And and I said to him, academically, hmm. you may not understand it academically. Yeah. But visually, you do. Yeah. You're looking at it from an artist's perspective, and the artist in you is telling you that's wrong. Mm-hmm. And this 180 degree rule is not just some rule that we made because it's an artistic rule. It's composition. Yeah. This is basic composition, and that's something that artists follow. They know, ba- yes. th- and they know when to break basic composition. That's part of the artist's eye of knowing when to do this. Mm -hmm. And when you're learning a screenwriting course or a filmmaking course, a cinematography course, they're going to teach you those rules so that you know them and you know how they work and why they work. And if you don't know why they work, then you don't know when it's good to break them. Because trust me, you can break that 180 degree rule. You just have to know when. As a director, you're a magician. And a magician has you looking in specific places. Part of your job as a director and a cinematographer as well is to direct the audience's eyes around the screen right. in a good flowing motion. They, they have two different places that they're going to look at. You're telling them where to look. And every time you shift that camera in different areas, mm-hmm. you're they're looking in an entirely different direction. So let's say you're sitting in a movie theater watching this. Your head 
is bouncing all over the screen. It's an uncomfortable And experience. your audience is yeah. now totally disoriented. Yeah. That because movies are meant to be seen in that big. Mm-hmm. Again, we're totally off totally topic off. right now, but when you're framing your shots, think of it that way. Consider what would this look like if you were seeing it on a 30 foot high screen? Right. Movies are a form of communication. Yeah. That's what it is. You know, like, uh, 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 yes, it's an art. Yes, it's whatever. But it is a form of communication. And we need certain things in place to properly communicate with one another. Mm -hmm. So this is the language. It's the visuals as to the language of it. So these plot points, I'm not telling you that every story that you write has to follow one of these. But it's going to. It's going to. It's going to. You can 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 apply it. Yeah, it's going to. Um, but I'm not saying that you have to follow this. You can't do a, a rags for, like we said, you can combine so many of them into, into one movie and one movie could be so many different ones of them. I mean, that's essentially why we have these plot points. Why we're discussing this now is that literally these are, these are ways for you to be able to tell a story in a short amount of time because you're working within predefined, pre-existing, I, I hate to say rules, guidelines. On to the next one. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next one we already kind of touched on is tragedy. Tragedy is the dark side of humanity and the futile nature of the human experience. That's what it's defined as. Uh, the protagonist is, is a hero with one major character flaw or great mistake, which is their undoing. Their unfortunate end evokes pity at their folly and the fall of a fent- fundamentally good character. So this would be Macbeth. Um, Romeo and Juliet, Bonnie and Clyde. Um, more recently, Death Note. I still haven't seen that, but okay. Yeah. Um, so when we flip this over for the horror. Yep. Um, this is essentially rebirth from the monster's perspective. This is the creation of a monster. Mm -hmm. So, the fly. The fly is a perfect tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he is in pursuit of something. His... He, he's on a bit of a quest mm-hmm. to find, to create teleportation. Right. Okay. Um, and he's a freaking genius. Mm-hmm. He's a genius. He's, his genius, he's created the teleportation. Mm-hmm. And the teleport and the success of his creation is his downfall. Yeah. It destroys him. To become the monster. Yeah, I mean, this is a mad scientist. I mean, a mad scientist through and through. Frankenstein is another great example. Yeah. Um, this is the mad scientist who, his his madness, his excitement, his elation at actually creating something makes him overlook one little thing. Mm-hmm. And that one little overlook is what brings him down. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, any mad scientist movie... Um, what else do we have? Willard. Willard, yes, Willard. He has the power. He is. He's the Pied Piper. Mm-hmm. The Will Willard. He has the power to talk to mice mm-hmm. and rats, and he uses that to extract revenge on people who've done him wrong. Right. And his power is his undoing. It makes him crazy. Hmm. He becomes insane by the end of the film. He's driven insane. Yeah. With his own power. Yeah. So his strength becomes his weakness. Right. Well, I mean, also with Willard, and I haven't seen it in a really long time, but to me, it's also like he kind of forgets that he's not a rat. Like, you know, like he he has the power to talk to rats and control rats, but he isn't a rat. So eventually they wind up devouring him and he ends up becoming a rat in that, you know, becoming one with the rat. I don't know. No, well, we're talking about the remake first off. Yeah. We're talking more of the remake. Um, no, he's always... Oh, he's am I thinking always, Ben? I could be thinking Ben. He's always in charge. Yeah. He's... It's be, because of... Because don't he's, they kill because him he's able, No, they don't. Oh. No. Because he's able to um, talk to the rats, yeah. he becomes drunk with the power right. of talking to the rats. And he's now forgetting that they're animals. Mm-hmm. You know, and although they listen to him, they are still nature. Right. They're still animals. Hmm. And um, Ben 
fights back again. If Ben, it, Ben wants the power, right? It's it's, it's still it's funny. You think of it that way, but it's true. Ben wants to be in charge. Right. He makes Socrates yeah. the head of the the head of the mice, and Ben wants the power. Mm-hmm. He wants to be the second in charge. He wants to be the uh, the right hand man. Yeah. yeah. He wants to be the head. He rat. wants well. He wants to be Willard's right hand man instead right. of Socrates. Right. You know, um, and he does a lot to help Willard, and Willard is so intent on being in charge, he doesn't realize that Ben is actually unwinding him slowly. Mm. He's going insane because Ben is still stronger than him. So Ben, him. by Ben, by giving him everything that he wanted and getting the revenge against him, mm-hmm. is essentially his undoing. Yes. So it's all. So in a, in a, in a way, it's a rags to riches as well. Mm. In a way, it's a rags to riches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the tragedy is that it is his undoing. Yeah. That he has this power and he abuses it. Yeah. And it turns on him and he loses everything. Right. Result. Which essentially is the, tra- yes. is the is the essence of tragedy. Yes. General, and he becomes a monster yeah. in the process. Yeah. And that's what destroys him. He, he started off as a weakling who mm-hmm. gains a power and eventually that power makes him into a monster. Yes. Yes. Uh, generally, though, in a tragedy... Your hero dies. Right. Your hero has to die to destroy the monster. Mm-hmm. But as you said, in horror films, you become the monster. Right. You can gen- you have you generally flip it, and he becomes the monster. Because in because in you know, in a horror movie, it's a it's not really a tragedy mm-hmm. in a horror movie for the yeah hero to win. Like Alien the- Three. Yeah. Is a tragedy because she has to be, she becomes the monster. She's she was the hero. And now she's literally giving birth to the monster. Hmm. And the only way to destroy the monster is to kill herself as well. Right. So that's, that's, that's the element that's of like the death. That's traditional yeah. tragedy right there. Yeah, that's the death of, of the yes. hero. Yes. She, that's, a, that's your traditional tragedy is Alien 3. Hmm. Now this next one's a little bit of a mind fuck. Yeah. It's There's comedy, two ways of going about it. Comedy is not what, it's not funny haha. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's not, it's not the classical definition of comedy. Comedy is tr- classically defined as a light or humorous character with a happy or cheerful ending. Mm. It's a dramatic work in which the central mo- motif motif is the triumph over adverse circumstance resulting in a successful or happy conclusion. So comedy is a happy ending story. Mm-hmm. It's not it doesn't have to be funny, it doesn't have to be humorous. Yeah. It's really a happy conclusion. Mm-hmm. So, you know, their examples, Mr. Bean, Four mm. Weddings and a Funeral, yeah. Bridget Jones's Diary. And you can go traditionally with, with, with the horror, with horror, you're talking horror comedies. Yeah. You're talking, you know, Evil Dead 2. Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness. Yeah. Which is really, which does have elements of. Army of, of Darkness <laughs> is Journey in Return. Yeah. It is yeah. a Journey in Return. Um, also a rebirth. He starts off as a you know a That's clerk at S Martin yeah Evil Dead, Evil Dead is, is is a rebirth cuz he starts off as a clerk at S Martin he becomes a badass you know mm-hmm. fighter of the undead and evil yeah. or the evil dead um what was I going to say the army of darkness is also a really good definition of the classic comedy mm-hmm. where you have a bumbling fool who just can't seem to get out of his own way yeah. and yeah. just makes things worse and worse for himself yeah. you know so that's also that's the classic that's another that is comedy as we know it today mm-hmm. comedy it's what it what it, it was it, it was it said it's it was, a light and humorous character with a happy and cheerful ending in a series of bumbling yeah in a series of um what did it say it's I not forget. on there it's, it's not, not my on phone. Here? No, it's on my you phone. You didn't write that part of it. No. Yeah, that the, the character goes through a series of it's, it's, of, of mishaps and not even so much mishaps. It's just a series of of uh, uh, complicated. That's what it said. Yeah. It was a series of complicated um, events mm. that lead to a lighthearted, happy ending. Yeah. That's what the comedy yeah. is. Yeah, and they can't get out of their own way. It's yes. essentially, you know, that's like yeah. what I was saying with the Army of Darkness. He just, mm-hmm. he just can't get out of his own way. He just makes things worse and worse for himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I made, uh, what other examples do we have before we get to uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Yeah. Um, it's perfect. They really can't get out of their own way. <laughs> it's, like they, it's not even them. It's like they are, they are, they are two happy characters, mm-hmm. and their happy ending is that he gets the girl. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's literally like... 
the the what is Tucker and Dale versus Evil about? Okay, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I know you which, love oh this my movie. god, I love this movie. <laughs> um, Tucker and Dale is told is a is a slasher film essentially told from the country bumpkins perspective. So it's literally like that creepy guy at the gas station. It's mm-hmm. that was that's the that's it's Tucker his and Dale. Yeah. yeah, it's Tucker and Dale, and um, they go into the, they they finally saved up enough money to to buy a cabin in the woods, a fishing cabin, you know. Yeah. And it's a it's a fixer upper. Okay. And they get there, and but there's, there are a bunch. There are a couple of country bumpkins, they're and country they're okay bumpkins. with fixing up a little. Yeah, that's what they, they work. Do. They, they work, work with their, their hands. hands. Yeah, yeah. That's they're, it. They, this is this is a just, dream come true. They just want a, a place that they can crash on the weekend, and they can go out into the water and drink some beers and fish. Mm-hmm. You know, and they just want a cabin where they can go back to at the end of that day. Yeah, two friends can drink in a cabin all day yeah. long while fishing. And this and is like happy. the definition of success for these guys. Yes. They're like, we're gonna have a fishing cabin. You know, like hey, they makes them so happy. They were like, they're like, our lives are going to change now. Um, so they go to their fishing cabin, and some really weird guy owned it. Like, mm-hmm. there's weird stuff everywhere, bones, and some weird calendars and pictures. It, maybe this guy was a killer who was lasted yeah. really weird. Um, and then it turns out that the really hot college kids that are going to their uncle's cabin, you know, in the same woods. Yeah. Um, fall into a, some strange mishaps yeah. that eventually they assume these two country bumpkins mm-hmm. are the cause of. A couple of mishaps? A couple of mishaps. Explain it. Just um, explain it. So, like, well, you know, they go skinny dipping in the lake. Yep. At the same time, Tucker and Dale are out fishing. Yep. And, um, you know, he sees the girl he met at the gas station earlier, and he goes to say hello to her, and he calls out, and she slips on a wet rock. Bash, hits her head on something and passes out in the water. Mm-hmm. So being the good guy that he is, he jumps into the water and fishes her out. Yeah. Tries to save her life. Now, the college kids on the other side of the lake see her get hurt and him pull her into the boat and go off with her. Yeah. So they assume that he, att- that he attacked her and <laughs> tries, now kidnapping is her. now kidnapping her. <laughs> so then now these, co- these, these college kids are now like, we have to go save our friend. Mm-hmm. Um. So one of them steps on a bear trap. Another one trips and falls and lands in the wood chipper. And poor Taylor and Ducker and Tail and Ducker, Dale and Tucker are like, "What is happening?" The funniest part of the whole movie, where they're like, "What? What is going on here?" These people, what? these people are committed mass suicide. <laughs> these college kids are. are he they threw himself into a, a wood yes. chipper. I just came, came here to relax. On a suicide mission. <laughs> I just came here to relax, and these college kids are just mass, mass suiciding all over the place. <laughs> it's the funniest part of the whole movie, <laughs> you know. And then the cops show up, and then the, the cop is like, "Hey, Tucker and Dale, what's going yeah, on?" Yeah, he's you friends know? with them. <laughs> he's friends with so them. So the college kids think that this is the conspiracy. <laughs> this is, where this the, is the crooked sheriff. <laughs> yeah, the crooked sheriff is okay with them killing people, and they must be working together to kill us all off. And yeah, it was. It's uh, such a. Oh, it's such a. Great Great twist! It's such an ingenious, yeah, mode of storytelling, and it's so well done. It's like because you so feel so bad for Tucker and Dale, you're like, oh my god, and then you're like, what is wrong with these college kids? And it's such a switch from the typical. Yeah. Oh my! Just go see it. Just <laughs> see it a hundred times. I yeah. love. I love that movie. But that's like that's a really good understanding of storytelling. Yeah. To do something like that, mm-hmm. it's not an easy feat at all. No. Um, so that's really mm-hmm. somebody who really knows their stuff. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the observation I made while we were doing this was The Shining. Yes. Is a comedy. It is a comedy. Mm-hmm. With it is a comedy veiled under tragedy. What are you talking about? It's veiled under. Uh, <laughs> the Shining cannot be a comedy. The Shining is a comedy. How is The Shining a comedy? The reason why it's not a comedy okay. is because of the way it was shot. Okay. The music that was used. Okay? But the truth is, they're just a family mm-hmm. who are trying to get away for what is this is a dream. Mm-hmm. They he's gotta write he has a book to write. Right. So they're gonna get away for the winter live as a happy family together for a couple of months. Right, but it doesn't have a happy ending. But it does. It does have a happy ending. Because do uh, uh, Danny oh, they and get Wendy away? get away or not? Hmm. They get away. Yeah. They defeat the monster, hmm. which is what their father has become. Right. Okay? 
he's also in his own way at all times. Yeah. Because all he's doing is trying to write the story. He's trying, you know, and his son apparently has this power. Hmm. His son's a little weird. His son is a little weird. Yeah. And he's just ignoring it. Right. Completely ignoring the power. Hmm. He then ignores his wife as a result. He becomes a monster. Hmm. Okay. In the overcoming the monster, which is what we said. Right. Every, horror Every horror movie, movie is movie. overcoming the monster. Right. Okay. Um, but he goes through a series of mishaps, which Kubrick did not shoot funnily. Right. He didn't shoot it in a comedic so the, way. The, the, you're calling the, like the delusion at the bar and the going back to drinking. He's a drunk. Yeah. He's a drunk. But he's And he's quit. just seeing things. Yeah. He's a drunk. He's a little crazy. Yeah. Okay? He's living out his own story in his head. Mm -hmm. Whatever he's writing, we don't know what he's... Because he ends up writing nothing. Yeah. He ends up writing all work and yeah. no play makes Jack, Jack a dull boy. boy. Okay? He's just writing that over and over. And he's been doing this... For three months right. straight, writing nothing but this. Right. But this ghost story is actually happening to him. But is it really happening? Hmm. Or is it all in his head? So what you're saying essentially is this is an isolated family that has problems. They suffer cabin fever. He suffers cabin right. fever. So they're already isolated in the beginning. Yes. Um, there's already been an incident in the family. Mm-hmm. Um, where he hurt Danny. Mm -hmm. and accidentally. Accidentally. Another accident. He pulled his... He was drunk, yeah. but it was an accident. He didn't mean to hurt his son. Right. He wasn't going out to hurt his yes, son. He, but he did. Yes. And it, so, a mishap. Right. Okay. Um, so now we have an isolated family that's already suffered one mm -hmm. mishap. And instead of dealing with the mishap, we're going to cover it up. The son, before they even leave, though, mm -hmm. he has an episode. A premonition. He has an episode. Okay. Say an episode. Because we don't know what he's a premonition. Right. We know, but right. Wendy don't know. doesn't know. Right. He has an episode mm -hmm. and sees the doctor. And yeah. the doctor puts the idea in Wendy's head that the father is abusive. Mm -hmm. Because of the way she responds to her when she tells her the story of him accidentally. Why isn't he the in mother, school? And yes, the mother, the, the, the doctor kind of responds in that way like, I think your husband is an abusive man. Yeah. So that changes her perspective on her own husband. But when it comes to the end, you did this to him. Hmm? We don't know who actually did. When Danny shows up with his, he's got the, the mark on his neck and his shirt is all torn. Yeah. We never find out who actually did it. Danny says it was the creature I mean, in the room. Yeah. but. Kids make shit up all the time. Yeah, I mean, kids kids use monsters as as, yeah. as a symbol for. We never actually see Danny go into the room. No. We never see it. Okay. Okay. So this kid could have made this story up. Okay. Who knows how we heard it? It could have been Jack. It could have been a ghost in the hotel. But we have no idea. Right. But the idea has already been planted in Wendy's head that Jack is abusive, mm. that he might, he did this to him. And he's, no, I, I didn't. He was nowhere near him. Because he, tr honestly, he wasn't. Yeah. So Danny could have hurt himself in any way possible and made yeah. up a story. Yeah. Because he's already, Danny's a little weird. Mm. Okay? So we have an isolated family. There's already been an incident. Mm -hmm. Um, We choose to avoid. Mm -hmm. Then we get to this job interview. Mm -hmm. And he lies. We're a happy family. Everything's going to be yes. fine. My wife's going to think this is great. It's going to be a vacation yeah. she's been waiting for. Mm -hmm. um, all he cares about is writing his story. Right. That's all he cares about. All he wants to do is, is get paid to sit on mm -hmm. his ass and essentially write. Yep. Um, so then he takes this job. Yeah. She does all the cooking. She does all the work. She cares for the, for she, the hotel. I mean, she's, she's taking care of the boiler. Yeah. She's yeah. doing everything. Yeah. And he's just sitting in this room writing, writing, right. writing for three months straight. And then he can't write. But he is writing. Well, he yeah, he's just writing. He can't write anything of substance. He's not currently actively writing. He's just typing. Mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't say anything. He just pretends he's writing. But here's the thing. Is he pretending? Because when she looks at it, mm -hmm. she sees what he's been writing and he says, what do you think? 
So he thinks he's been writing. Could it be possible that he's thinking he is writing a story? You know? Hmm. He thinks he's writing it, and then, I mean, because it's all tucked away beautifully like, like it's a book. Yep. Like yep. He, he piled it just like a book would you would pile it. Mm-hmm. And how many times does she come in the room, and she comes in, and he says, yeah. you're distracting me. I can't get back to what I'm doing. I can't yeah. get back. So then his son is attacked, and he ignores yeah. it. Mm-hmm. He starts seeing things, people that couldn't be there because the hotel is close. Why is there mm-hmm. somebody walking around? Doesn't say yeah. anything. So, yeah, I can see he's sort of a bumbling... It, it tells he's a the fool. Story. He's yeah. definitely a fool. He's a fool. He's definitely a bumbling fool stumbling through things. Mm-hmm. Um, so it follows the story structure of a comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still say... Yeah, I mean, from... Well, see, but this is why I said The thing earlier. that makes it a comedy, though, is that you have to have a happy character that has a happy ending. Wendy is, Wendy is a happy character from the get-go. I think she's pretending. From the beginning, she is very happy. She is happy. pretending from the beginning, I think. Okay. I think she's one of those, it's just act like everything is fine, and eventually it will become fine, mm-hmm. because I'm acting like it's fine. Okay. Um, that's, that's how I would define her. Danny doesn't seem like a very happy little boy. Danny's just, <laughs> he's a kid. Yeah. Danny's a kid. He's a weird kid. Yeah. Weird kids are not always happy. Mm. Um, I don't have anything that any backup that says that Danny's a happy boy. Okay. Um, so I don't know about this comedy thing. It so definitely follows say, the structure. It follows the structure of a comedy. Yes. And I think it ends in tragedy. I mean, I because our it does our end in protagonist tragedy. Absolutely, he dies. becomes the monster. Yeah. And he dies. And in order for his our new protagonists in Wendy mm-hmm. and Danny to survive, they actually have to let him die. And they're reborn. And they are reborn. Yes. So we have the structure of comedy. Mm-hmm. We have the ending of a comedy mm-hmm. with them getting um, away. Two of the characters. Yes. We have rebirth in yeah. it. The characters who are actually able to change and become mm-hmm. transformed. Yeah. You know, because Jack doesn't really transform into the monster. He already is the monster and he's yeah, okay. unleashing the monster. Yeah. Which makes it a tragedy. Right. Because you're seeing, because tragedy is, is, you're seeing is, is a rebirth through a monster's his, eyes. His major character tragedy, flaw is that he wants to write. Yeah, tragedy, but tragedy and his, is... And his writing is what leads him into madness. Yes. And, and like you said, tragedy is rebirth through a monster's eyes. Right. So we have that. We have the fact that um, it's also a journey and return. He's, he's looking for his book. Because they're... But Wendy and Danny mm-hmm. are on a journey in return. Yes. Because they go and they come back changed. Yes. Okay? So they, they journey in return. Jack. He's is, on a quest. Jack is on a quest. Yes. He's on a quest for his book. So. As all seven. Rags, rags to riches. riches. Rags to riches. He gets his book. He gets his. He's, he's, he's looking for a story. He's writing, he gets what he wants, which is the seclusion to write his story. And then it's taken away from him because he becomes a monster. Yeah. He was a writer. He tries he to become a writer, a writer and be- then he, he becomes a monster. A it's man. taken away from him. Yeah. It's his descent. Yeah, Rags to Riches doesn't totally fit. It doesn't though. totally fit, but it does fit the descent. Sort of. Yeah. It has the elements of a descent. So basically what we're saying is The Shining is all can can fit all, all seven, seven stories. Has elements of all seven. Which is why I think The Shining is one of the greatest films ever made. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> anytime, we, anytime you can find a way to bring The Shining in. You I just... can. I, I will. And I will. I will. But, you know, it, it's it's been said a lot of people say that, you know, by the time he got to The Shining, Kubrick was bored. Yeah. With filmmaking, because he was, well, I mean, he, he had mastered it. Yeah. In his eyes, he in, had mastered. In much of the world. In most of the, yes, true. He had mastered filmmaking. He was, his films were perfect. Yeah. There was nothing wrong with them, other than the fact that, as we said, because we, we just watched 2001. Right. The only, the only downside to his films was literally the limitations. Oh, let's do 2001 real of, quick. Okay. They're on a quest. They are on a quest. They're hoping it's going to be a journey in return. Uh huh. <laughs> um, rags to riches for Hal. He was a machine <laughs> <laughs> who became essentially a man. Okay. Then they overcome the monster in Hal. Uh huh. Rebirth. Oh, it's literally the end of the movie. Is yeah. is entirely rebirth. Yeah, he goes to the end and he sees himself as an old man, and then we go to 
the fetus in in yeah. it's literally rebirth. Rebirth. <laughs> he's literally reborn. He's tragic because he watches himself die. Yeah. Comedy. Happy ending. He gets back. Comedy. Those monkeys were pretty funny. <laughs> Those monkeys. Were funny. <laughs> <laughs> Those monkeys were buffoons. <laughs> they were bumbling fools. What were they doing? Why didn't they have tools? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, maybe that's what separates Kubrick is that he he he, he could connect all of them in there. And as I said, he he became bored with traditional filmmaking, and I think he perfected it. Yeah. He knew, and he wanted to create in The Shining. This is one of the theories that he wanted to create a new type of film where he told one story through the narrative and another through the visuals. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, I think he was he essentially successfully combined all seven story structures mm -hmm. into three characters. Yeah, you know. I think that's what makes The Shining such an incredible film from oh, a filmmaking the old man and story. A, huh? The old man is a tragedy. The old man has tragedy as well. Well, yes and no. Yes, I guess so. Halloran is, uh, Halloran Halloran, is a, yeah, he's, a he's, bit of a tragic character. He's coming to save them and he's killed he's, by the monster. He's good heart and his good heart is his downfall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he could have just stayed there and called the cops. Yeah, you know, he could have just kept calling the cops and there's something going on at the hotel or something yeah. going on at the hotel. He knew what was going on at the hotel because yeah. Danny told him by shining. Dead. Yeah, so he knew. Danny told him. What so was he going could on. he could have called cops from afar, yeah. but it was his good heart. Hmm? It's that good heart. It's We're always really tragic. twisting this all around. <laughs> really stretching, stretching. Really, really stretching. You know? <laughs> We're gonna get a lot of hate for this. I think nah. people are not gonna be happy about this. <laughs> All right, I'll wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. There's seven basic stories. And in order <laughs> to use them for horror, you have to flip them on their heads. You flip things on their heads, yes. Flip them so on when their you're heads. writing a story. So horror is a lot harder than people think. It is. To make great horror. Yeah. To make great horror. That, that's the point of this. Mm -hmm. To make great horror. Yeah. Every horror is overcoming the monster. Mm -hmm. If you want to make an exceptional horror film, you need to put one or Substance. more of these other things within the story. And right. that's what makes it a great horror. Right. All the greatest horror films that you can think of have more than one of these story types. What makes great within horror it. is changing the face of the monster. Yeah. Because when you make horror, it's going to be something overcoming the monster. You're mm -hmm. going to overcome something. Um, and it's literally putting that face, yeah. a different face on that monster. And then having your protagonists have multiple deep resonating mm -hmm. reasons for taking on this monster. Yeah. And then his companions who are along the journey with him, you know, creating that journey, creating those people that surround them, the companions and giving yeah. them motivation is mm -hmm. what makes a really engaging, captivating story. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I summed it up. Yes. So, uh, okay. Well, we have have a everybody have a happy Halloween. If you are available, please come on out to see Theta States, October fifth, South Bridge, Massachusetts, four p.m. Starlight Lounge. Go to MassgravePictures dot com. <laughs> click the red bar at the top to buy your tickets. Ten dollars, ten bucks, ten bucks for the Theta for Theta States. I'm gonna do a hashtag too. Okay. Hashtag not so basic stories. Not so basic stories. Okay. Hashtag not so basic stories. Yeah. So much for short short hashtags, huh? <laughs> um. Uh, uh uh So yeah, come on out. Come on out to follow, the Shauna Shea Film Festival. Follow us along on Mass Grave Pictures. We should be announcing some additional film yes, festivals. Yes, yes, yes. We actually do have some others that we cannot announce yet. Yeah. Because the the festival hasn't announced it yet. That's right. So we can't. But follow us, and within the, by the end of this week, there will be something else announced. At least an announce. At least one announcement. At least one announcement by the end of this week. Right. Uh, so follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram. Whatever Massgrave Pictures, search for us. You'll find. Check us, us out on Instagram because we're always doing really fun. Instagram challenges yeah. in the month of October. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, last year we did a t-shirt one. I think we already have at least one that we're going to plan mm -hmm. to follow along with. those was a horror movie a day kind of yep. challenge. Um, so we'd love for you to join us. So follow us both on Instagram, MGP Director and Mrs. Massgrave. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
And be sure, please subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play and wherever else. And give please us subscribe review. to us. Go to iTunes and rate us and review us, please. Helps us grow. So that's going to do it for us this week here at Filmmaking Sucks. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, are you going to say anything? You should no. look at me. I was no. just thinking, like, we're on a journey, but I don't know if we're going to return. So we're on a quest. Filmmaking sucks is a quest. Sure. <laughs> Whatever you say. I don't know. It's quite tragic. It's tragic. This is a tragedy, really. This is just a crying <laughs> shame. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a comedy and we'll have a happy ending. I hope so. Me too. I hope so. On that note. <laughs> On that note, get out there, everybody, and make good films. <laughs>